The Elf Quest pack is coming next, but with new furniture, Avalon Hill showed off some very intriguing stuff about the next Hero Quest release, as well as releases for some of their other games. On the first couple days of Gen Con, they did have this article teasing a couple things, but they appear to have removed it, so I'll be instead looking at their upcoming releases for Avalon Hill announced at Gen Con 2022. So they announced this D&D game about being a barkeeper at the Yawning Portal, as well as of course the Rogue Heir of Elethorn, which I've already done a video covering in detail. But that's not all for HeroQuest fans. The next quest pack in the series, The Mage of the Mirror, has also been announced. As with Colors Keep, Return of the Witchlord, and The Frozen Horror, this expansion is a fan favorite from the original set, now updated and brought into line with the current edition of the HeroQuest game system. This was only a US release originally, so people outside of the US are going to be able to experience it as well. This adventure sees trouble brewing in the Elven Kingdom, and a brave elf must first manage their way through dangerous soul quests before rejoining their party to confront the diabolical archmage Sinestra. The Mage of the Mirror will include a quest book featuring 10 quests, 33 finely detailed miniatures, and 35 game cards that will expand the game for both Jargon and the heroes. The expansion is expected to release in the spring of 2023 and requires the Hero Quest game system to play. Then they also announced this expansion for Betrayal at House on the Hill, and the reason why I'm mentioning it is because I also did a review of the base game. And one more thing that's not Hero Quest, but is very exciting news, is that they're going to be re-releasing HeroScape. Let's take a look at their teaser video for Age of Annihilation. Didn't give many details, but there's both Hero Quest and HeroScape stuff to look at in videos and pictures from Gen Con. On the first day of Gen Con, they had this Avalon Hill booth tour. In the center there is where they had the Adventure Design Kit, the Into the Northlands cards that you can print off, as well as a Betrayal comic book. They had display cases filled with HeroQuest stuff, and interestingly enough, the Mythic Tier stuff is there as well as the Guardian Knight. So is that just them showing off what they've done in the past with HeroQuest, or is that hinting at what's coming next for it? They also had this big display set up with the broadsword so that the people who were there could take a nice picture of it, and they also had many tables set up where you could demo different games, including HeroQuest of course. And here's their HeroScape display case. Even though the miniatures are painted, they do come unpainted, but similar to HeroQuest, they will be in solid colors, so you're able to differentiate between the different teams. Mage of the Mirror is also in this HeroQuest display case, but I have pictures of it that are more clear than this video ever shows. Some of these pictures come from members of the community too. This first one is a close-up of what the Rogue Heir of Elethorn's text actually says on the note. And without reading all of this, I'm just going to tell you that it leads straight into the Elf Quest Pack. And the other important thing here is that we can tell that the Elf has quite a lot of detail and is basically the same as the ones that we saw on the website, which is very good because those were highly detailed. We can also see a sneak peek of the skills, which we didn't see before. And while well, the top one is a dagger, this one is the one where you can move through spaces that are occupied by monsters, and this one is like an extra attack. So we have another picture of two of the cards. Opportunistic Striker is the one where you may throw one extra combat die when attacking a monster next to another hero. It should probably say adjacent to instead of next to. And it says do not discard after use. Ambidextrous is the one where once per turn when you attack with a short sword or dagger, you may make one additional attack with the dagger, and you also don't discard that after use. So it seems like with the Rogue, some of these skills are passives, rather than having to be played and then discarded like spells, or even like the Bard, where he gets a spell back after a hero rolls two shields on their defense dice. And here we have the Bandolier. This is not a very clear picture of it, but what I can tell is that it acts as a toolkit. The other thing with this is that if you have any daggers, and you throw them, instead of being lost, you just get to keep them. Now with Mage of the Mirror, I can tell you right now that I really like this box art. It's of the female elf attacking a bunch of ogres, and you have who I assume to be Sinestra the Archmage back here. Oh, I just noticed the spiky shield too. Very interesting. This is the first picture that I ever saw of this, and it's one of the most detailed ones, but also gives us a look of everything. The first thing to notice is that there's new elven furniture. This is not something that was in the original elf quest pack which is the old name for this expansion. So, zooming in on this, you see a nice chest with like almost vine designs on it. You have the alchemist bench with a lot more different things than the original one. Coins on it, you have a bowl of something, more spices and potions, a map that's rolled up. You have these portcullis gates with very interesting designs and that same bird that's on the rogue expansion. Wider looking furniture with some waviness in it for the bookshelves. A weapons rack with elven shields on it instead of just generic human looking ones. A couple more portcullises. You have the tomb. Oh, a different wooden door as well. This looks like a treasure card and it's a potion that allows you to avoid traps. Some nice artwork of the elven warriors and the archers 
which are these miniatures right here, that's Sinestra. And yes, if you haven't seen it already, there's also ogres in this expansion, as well as big wolves. So getting a decent shot of these ogres, they fit on a 1 inch size base, which is nice, and all four of the sculpts appear to be exactly the same, but I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, and knowing that we have ogres coming in the future, it makes Against the Ogre Horde even more likely. I've heard positive things from members of the community about these wolves, because the old wolves hung over their base even though it was a similar size, and these new ones are contained within it. You have some kind of globe thing that you punch out, as well as this wall here that also appears to be cardboard, the wall with a giant mirror on it, and these other mirrors are also just printed on. So if you were missing the old cardboard style doors, there you go, you have a new stand for it and the new style, and I would assume that it would be slightly larger than the old ones just because it's that one inch size board. I have a better shot of him, but this is actually a male elf, so if you missed out on the crowdfunding campaign, you can have yourself a male elf right here, if you really despise the female one in the base game. And look at the giant wolf artwork. This is very similar, if not exactly the same, to the one that we saw in Into the Northlands. These are the pictures from the community members, I'm fairly certain. So we get a better shot of the wolf, and you can actually see it has nice spiky teeth there, very easy to discern. You have these elven warriors, as well as one of the ogres is taking front and center. He's a little bit blurry, but the one over here is nice and in focus. And he also has teeth poking out of his mouth. Here's our close-up of our male elf. Interesting design on the shield there. I really like that. And one more close-up of the cards, as well as an actual close-up of an ogre. That is for sure vines encapsulating the chest. The ogres all have axes and they have shoulder pads. Some eagle-eyed community members have pointed out that these ogres actually have half the body points that they normally did in the old expansion. They only have five now, whereas they used to have ten. So some people are slightly disappointed that it's not as challenging. But one thing that Avalon Hill has had to keep in mind is that they're trying to make these expansions playable after just beating the base game, because not everybody is going to do it in the lore accurate way. We have the back of the box to look at as well. The mirror is the key to saving Princess Melandriel and the realm from evil. In this exciting expansion of the Hero Quest Adventure, you are challenged to confront the diabolical Archmage Sinestra. As the elf, you must first survive dangerous solo quests to prove your strength and valor before you are joined by your fellow heroes to rescue Melandriel. You will recover a legendary sword, free two of the Queen's attendants, and navigate safely through their treacherous maze. Only then will your fellow heroes join you to gain access to Glynis Fen and pass through the mirror to the Realm of Reflection to free the princess. So yeah, with the back of the box, we can see what is all in it, and I will be looking at Yield End to see what was in the old one. 10 quests, with 3 solo quests for the elf, 5 group quests, and the double quest, which is a similar thing as Frozen Horror. There are a bunch of different artifacts here, 7 in total. Ancient Staff, which we saw in one of the pictures. Elven Boots, Elven Bracers, a Spell Scroll of Treasure Without Doom. Bone Wand, Elven Bow of Vindication, and a Sky Orb. Okay, so that's what the crystal ball looking thing must be. Then there's chaos spells, which will be the dread spells. Dispel, mirror magic, restore chaos, which will now be restore dread. Werewolf's curse, which we saw as well. Mind blast, reanimation, and summon wolves. The monsters are elven archer, giant wolf, elven warrior, and the ogre, which yes, 10 body points right here. A couple different treasure cards, airwalk, treasure horde, elven cloak of passage, wolf's bane potion, which cures the werewolf's curse and the elf actually gets spells to cast, interesting. Deep Sleep, Double Image, Hypnotic Blaze, Time Stop, Disappear, Flashback, Slow, and Twist Wood. Now, just quickly taking a look through all these tiles. I'm curious to see if we're going to be getting these tiles with random pieces of equipment on them or not. And oh, why are we getting more stairs in the old expansion, weird. Looks like they actually used almost the same mirror pieces. And this is the wall with the giant mirror on it that we saw laying down. That one has wolf tokens, which I would guess would be the werewolf, probably. Similar stuff as before. Looks like all the stone is broken here. And there's a carpet on the floor, too. Now, quickly looking at the miniatures. This was the old female elf, which it's been replaced by the male elf in the re-release. There's two elven archers and two elven warriors. Four ogres, which we saw four of the ones with axes rather than clubs with a nail driven through it. Three giant wolves, which you can see they overhang their base. The archmage. One more thing at Gen Con is that they had these posters, two of which are the box arts for the latest expansions, and one of which is a piece of artwork that we haven't really seen before. While I've never experienced Mage of the Mirror myself, I hope that seeing the news gets you excited for Spring 2023, and I'll be sure to cover any updates in the future. Goodbye.